Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, for this Easter retreat. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have done. You are marvelous. You are wonderful. You are great. You are glorious. And, oh, Lord, we pray everything you have done will be permanent in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, who died for us on the cross of Calvary. You are our savior, you are our substitute, and you are our, our sin bearer, and you are the redeemer and the deliverer. Oh Lord, we are praying, all the deliverance you got for us on that cross, all the dominion you got for us on that cross, all the liberty you gave to us on that cross will be ours in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray at this time, what we still need to receive from your word, you grant to everyone. Power, authority, unction, anointing, freedom, liberty, redemption, healing, everything. Give to your people in Jesus' name. And we pray that everybody will go out of this place in the victory of the Lord in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Galatians chapter 3. We're looking at verses 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, Cause said is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through faith, uh, through Jesus Christ, that we, might receive the promise of the spirit through faith that you in particular today will receive all the promise of the spirit through faith in jesus name as we come to the conclusion of this easter retreat we're talking about partaking of wonders from his wondrous cross partaking of wonders from his wondrous cross. You've seen over there that he bore all the curse for us. Took everything away. And because of that, now we're free. And we have the blessings of Abraham. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. You see that again is because of what he did for us on the cross. We have that double miracle for the soul, for the spirit. It says, We're not live unto righteousness, we're dead unto sin, and then for our body, we are now healed by his stripes philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 8 philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 8 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross he died for us on the cross he became obedient to the death that's the death on the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As I said, we want to partake of wonders from his wondrous cross. Partaking of wonders from his wondrous cross. Three things we're going to consider. Number one, feeding on his words on the cross. You know that Jesus spoke some things on the cross. Immediately he got to the cross before he died. There are seven sayings of Christ on the cross. And the Lord wants us to re-examine them again. And feed on them. 
dwell on them, benefit from them, profit from them, feeding on his words on the cross. Number two, fighting with the weapon of his cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is a mighty weapon in the hand of the believer. And whatever comes against our lives, the world, the flesh, and the devil were able to fight victoriously and conquer by the weapon of his cross. Number three, following the way of the cross. Following the way of the cross. Because it's the way of the cross that leads home. The way of the cross lead so is good for me to know as i onward go that the way of the cross leads so following the way of the cross number one feeding on his words on the cross if you look at luke chapter 23 luke chapter 23 you'll see the first thing is said when he was hanging there on the cross, crucified. Luke 23, reading from verse 34. In Luke chapter 23, verse 34, here are the first words of Jesus. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what did you on the cross jesus prayed for the forgiveness of the people that crucified him and when we say people that crucified him the jews and the romans the jews and the gentiles and we are gentiles and we contributed to the crucifixion of the lord jesus christ on the cross our sins nailed him to the cross our iniquity led him, led, led him on the cross. And because of that iniquity, the transgression, the sin, the evil that nailed Jesus on the cross, you will think there will be no forgiveness because we have committed the greatest of all sins. But he prayed and he said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. We're looking at Acts chapter 5. Verses 30 and 31. Acts chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Not only that he prayed for that on the cross. Now he rose again. And now he is giving us the mind to repent. The heart to repent. It makes us feel sorry for our sins. Not only being sorry, and then we turn away from the sin. And now he grants us, grants us forgiveness. In Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The second thing is said on the cross. We're coming to Luke chapter 23 again. Luke chapter 23. And we're reading from verse 43. But for you to get the understanding of why he said what he said in verse 43. We're going to back up to verse 42 and then read verse 43. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And here we find the thief on the cross beseeching the Lord. Pray to the Lord, asking the Lord, pleading with the Lord. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He knew that he had a short moment to live because he will soon die. And he didn't want to die and then go to a lost eternity. And or even at that late hour, at that late moment, he appealed to the Lord, remember me. And look at the second thing that Jesus said now. Look at him, verse 48, Jesus said, Unto him, verily I say, unto thee, 
today thou shalt be with me where in paradise today thou shalt be with me in paradise the lord forgave him he was a great sinner because his sin led him to the cross and no matter what kind of sinner you have been and even if the world has condemned you and the world has judged you and your family has judged you and everybody forsook you because you happen to be a great sinner a great criminal the lord will still take you apart or take you to paradise if you ask him if you say no i'm a sinner i know i've done what i shouldn't have done it has led me to this point and then you say lord remember me he will remember you in jesus name first timothy chapter 1 verse 15 first timothy chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 15 and from verse 16 it says in verse 15 this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He came to save sinners of whom I am chief. Can't you see that thief on the cross, the chief of sinners, the champions of sinners, the champion of sinners, and the most terrible, the vilest of all sinners. And the Lord saved him. Salvation is available for you. Paradise is available for you. We're looking at John chapter 19. John chapter 19. And we're looking at verse 27. John chapter 19. We're reading from verse 27. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And you know that when Jesus Christ was here on earth, many times when he will be ministering, the mother will come, the brothers will come, and then he will say, your mother is seeking for you. He was in the midst of ministry, and he will say, oh, what's up? Uh, you know who is my mother? This is my mother, the one that is saying the word of God, and my brothers and sisters, and they're keeping the word of God. Not only that, yeah, at the time of the marriage of the king of Galilee, you remember that the mother said, they have no wine. He said, woman, what's it between me and you, between you and I? Because his hour was not yet come. And then the mother said, "You, whatever he says unto you, do it. And a miracle came, like a miracle is coming your way right now. But now, he was now hanging on the cross. And as he was on the cross, he never forgot to, to, to take care of his mother. And he doesn't forget today. You know, he was in the height of pain. He said, I thirst. The pain was so much. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And the blood was dripping down. And then he was very weak. Even in that state of suffering, he still remembered to care for the mother. Now he is not suffering. He's on right hand of majesty on high. He will remember to care for you. I said he'll remember to care for you. And we're told from that hour, those, that disciple then took Mary and took her to his own house and began to take care of the mother of Jesus. He cared for the mother even at that hour. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. And I'm reading from verse 46. Matthew chapter 27. We're reading from verse 46. Matthew 27. Verse 46, the words of Jesus Christ on the cross. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And then it says, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's never been like this from all eternity. We have always been together. I and my father are one. But because was bearing your sin and your load and your punishment on the cross of Calvary, the Lord, the father forsook him. He felt the pain. He felt the separation. He felt the agony. And he said, why? Why? Why have you forsaken me? Let's look at the answer in uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 53. From verse 6. In verse 6 it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. 
we have turned everyone his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all the iniquity of us all. You understand? That all your own sin that you should have suffered for, all your own sin that should have driven you to hell fire, the Lord took every sin away from you so that there is no iota, there is no stain, and there is no symbol, and there is no shade or size of sin remaining in your life. He took everything away from you and laid it on Christ. Now you are free, and because the soul that sinneth, it shall die, and you should have died, and he has taken all the sins away from you and laid it on Christ. That's the why, that's the reason, that's why, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he was carrying the sin of the whole world at that time it was carrying your sin look at that verse again in verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray we have taught everyone his own way and the Lord has laid on him the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all because he bore your sin you will not bear them anymore John chapter 19 John chapter 19 and we're reading here from verse 28. John chapter 19, verse 28. John chapter 19, verse 28. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, says, I thirst. I thirst. I thirst. He was thirsty. When he said he was thirsty, and what does that mean? Remember now that if the sinner dies without salvation, if a man dies without salvation, if a woman dies without salvation, he goes to the lake of fire. And when he gets to the lake of fire, he'll be very thirsty. And the thirst will be so intense and so sharp, it will be tormenting. Look at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 22. Luke chapter 16, we're reading from verse 22. It says from Luke 16, 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by, by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. All those who go to hell, they thirst, they thirst. And they thirst, you would have borne, you would have endured for all eternity because your iniquity came on the Lord Jesus Christ, they thirst for water that you should have experienced in hell that thirst came on the Lord Jesus and then it was so intense and so serious he said I thirst thank God no hell for you again thank God no torment for you again thank God all the thirst of hell you should have experienced Jesus has experienced everything it will not be upon you anymore in Jesus name you're on your way to heaven and in heaven, there is no thirst. There is no thirst. Jesus Christ has paid the price for you and has taken that away from you in Jesus' name. John chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 30 here. John chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 30. John chapter 19. We're reading from verse 30. In verse 30, it says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished tell me it is finished tell me again it is finished in jesus name look now chapter 23 luke chapter 23 we're reading from verse 46 luke chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 46 verse 46 it says, and when Jesus 
had cried with a loud voice he said father into thy hands i commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghost that was the final word father into your hands i commend my spirit already had said father forgive them they know not what they do already had said Today thou shalt be with me in paradise to that thief. He took care of his salvation. Already he has said, Disciple, behold thy mother. And he took care of the mother. Already he has said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we realize this our sin that made him to be forsaken. Already he said, I thirst. And all the thirst we should have experienced in hellfire. He took the thirst on himself. And now already he said, It is finished. And because he has finished the work of redemption, he has finished the provision of salvation. Everything is now totally finalized. He now said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Psalm 31. In Psalm 31, in Psalm 31, we're looking at verse 5. Psalm 31, we're looking at verse 5. In verse 5, it says, Into thine hand I commend my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. It's telling us, as our Redeemer has said, so now we who are redeemed of the Lord and we who are saved by his grace and we who have tasted of that life eternal, he tasted death for us, he tasted the thirst for us, he tasted the punishment for us and he has committed himself unto the Lord. Now between now and the gates of eternity opening, we commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord as well. And we know that as Jesus finished his race, triumphantly here on earth you too by the grace of God you will finish your race triumphantly here on earth in Jesus name point number two fighting with the weapon of his cross fighting with the weapon of his cross the devil will try to fight against us but the cross that will win and the flesh will try to fight against us, but it's the, it's the cross that will win. And then the world itself, with all the pollutions and defilements of the world, they try to knock at the door and fight against us. By the cross, we're going to win in Jesus' name. All those demons, they'll try to fight against your life because we wrestle not against, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the, the rulers of darkness in the, in the high places. But in it is by the cross we're going to win. You're going to win the victory in Jesus' name. You see, when you believe in that cross where Jesus died, victory is waiting for you every turn of the way in Jesus' name. Galatians, Galatians chapter, chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, we're looking at verse 14. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our lord jesus christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and i unto the world the world is crucified unto me and i unto the world my the world and i we have nothing in common they have rejected me and i have rejected them too because the lord says i chose you out of the world and the, the world is not trying to please me it is crucified unto me i am not trying to please the world either because i'm crucified unto the world because it is the cross of jesus christ that gives of the victory over the world. I'm looking at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 16. It tells us and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby. The enmity of the world has been slain has been put to naught has been paralyzed by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ the world may frown. We overcome the frowning world by the cross and the world may oppose and we overcome that opposing world by the cross and the world may try to persecute and we overcome that persecuting world by the cross of Calvary. It is this cross that gives us the victory. You are going to have the victory in Jesus' name. 
Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 17. Philippians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 17. It says, Brethren, be followers together of me. And then it says, and mark them which walk so as she have us for an example for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their belly whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. You see, all those things will try to come against your life. You know, the need and desires and demand of the belly, and the needs and desires and demand and, and, the, and the demand of the body. And then it says, we overcome that. Even the shame, the shameful things that people do will try to knock at your door. But it says, we overcome by the cross of Christ. The enemies of the cross, they'll try to oppose your life. But then you overcome by that same cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 4. Galatians chapter 1, we're reading from verse 4. It says in verse 4, Who gave himself our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world. How, how does he deliver us? By the cross. And then for you to keep that deliverance from the present evil world, you're keeping your face in the cross. You're holding on to the cross. You're beholding the cross. And you're looking at Jesus who died for you on the cross. It says he delivers us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. It says in verse 5, Philippians chapter 2, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He died on the cross. Let that same mind be in you. He made of himself no reputation. Let that mind be in you. He suffered for us on the cross. Let that mind be in you. It says in verse 6, Who being in the form of God, thought he not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and he was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself let that man be in you and became obedient unto death let that might be in you even the death of the cross even the death of the cross even the death of the cross you die to all the desires of the world it's like you know you are dead and therefore it doesn't have any hold any attraction for you anymore it's like a man who had been a drunkard when he's really dead all the bottles of beer alcohol will not hold any interest for him anymore it's like a man who had been a chain smoker he smokes this he smokes that he smokes whatever it is he can lay his hands upon when he's dead, all those cigars and cigarettes will not have any hold on him anymore. It's like a person that is a socialite, you know, is always in this nightclub, that nightclub, and that other place. And when he dies, all those things will not hold any interest on him anymore. Die to the world and die to the flesh and die to all those attractions and distractions. That's what he's saying over there because you allowed that mind to be you, which was in Christ, and you die to every everything is a great weapon in the hand of the believer the crucified believer and you're going to have the victory in jesus name we're looking at second corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 second corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal the cross is not carnal. The cross of Jesus Christ is not carnal. Calvary is not carnal. God, God, all that he did for us on that, on that hill is not carnal. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The cross of Jesus Christ will pull down every stronghold in your life in Jesus' name casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Is the cross of Jesus Christ 
that grants us that victory. We have the victory in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, we're looking at verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, we're looking at verse 1 and verse 2. I beseech you, therefore, therefore, because of the death of Jesus, I beseech you, therefore, because of his suffering for you on the cross, I beseech you, therefore, because of the power in the cross of Christ, I beseech you, therefore, because of all the iniquity that you had before laid upon Christ, I beseech you, therefore, because of all the punishment that Jesus bore, all the pain that Jesus bore, eternal torment that Jesus bore, because he bore even the anger and the wrath of God on your behalf, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, the mercy see that transferred sin away from you and transferred to his only begotten son I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service what can I offer to the Lord for the great salvation he has given me he says you bring your body now. yes your soul yes your heart yes your spirit but your body as well and everything you possess and then you come to surrender them to the Lord Jesus Christ that is the acceptable sacrifice is the living sacrifice is the holy sacrifice it is the perfect sacrifice, reasonable service then he says and be not conformed to this world be not conformed to this world that's the world that crucified your lord be not conformed to this world that's the that's the world that ridiculed your lord be not conformed to this world that's the world that didn't want your salvation and said come down from the cross and will believe you that's the cross that blasphemed that's the world that blasphemed the lord be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Number one, feeding on his words on the cross. Feeding on his words on the cross. Number two, fighting with the weapons of his cross. Now point number three, following the way of the cross. Following the way of the cross. Following the way of the cross. That's what the Lord is calling us to. The Lord is now telling us that we shall follow the way, the way, the way of the cross. We're looking at uh, what the word of God has to say concerning this, following the way of the cross, the cross of Christ. I read this before. I think it bears reading again. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And we're reading from verse, we're reading from verse 3 now, Philippians chapter 2. Now that Jesus Christ has died for you and died for me and died for us on the cross of Calvary, what are we to do now? It says in verse 3, let nothing be done through strife of being glory. Always look at the cross. Always look at the cross. Somebody has offended you. Somebody has injured you. And then you want to have a particular reaction. You want to have a particular kind of retaliation. Look at the cross. Look at the cross and see what Jesus did for you on the cross. And say, if he bore that for me, I didn't pay anything for that. I can bear any other thing and let nothing be done through strife of being glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not or every man on his own things on his own things you know if jesus christ was if he were looking on his own things his own pleasure his own happiness his own joy and his own livelihood and everything he wouldn't he wouldn't have died for you and for me on the cross of calvary he forgot himself he gave himself he surrendered himself and were to do the same he says look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus as we go through life we're coming from calvary we're coming from the cross and we have seen jesus christ who died for us on the cross and then the image and the picture is still very much heavy on our minds we see the blood dripping down and we see the crown of thorns on him and we see him crying and shouting to the lord my god my god why have you forsaken me and yet in the midst of it all 
call, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. And if the Lord forgive us, all the atrocities were committed. How about forgiving other people, forgiving members of the church who has offended us, and forgiving members of our families who have offended us, and forgiving some people in our offices who have offended us, and we're not holding on to it and saying, until we die, I'm not going to allow that thing to go. I must get my own pound of flesh. Don't do that. Always have the cross before you, and look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of himself no reputation, and he took upon him the form of his servant, and he was he was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Well, not even, I don't think it comes to that today that you humble yourself to the point you're obedient unto death. You, maybe you, uh, you're obedient and then you deny yourself of that little thing, your own pleasure and what you like, what you want and then you forgive and even though the person had trampled on you and stepped on you, you didn't die, you didn't die you still humble yourself that's what the Lord is saying, that's what the cross should do in our life that's following the way of the cross, we're looking at Matthew chapter 16 and I'm reading from verse 24, following the way of the cross, we're looking at this Matthew chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 24 16 24 then said Jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me the Lord is saying I'm going to the cross. He hadn't died at this time. He was on his way to Jerusalem, on his way to the cross. He said, I'm going to the cross. And that's the final destination. That's where I'm going to pay the price for the redemption, salvation, forgiveness of all men. And if you want to follow me, follow me. We're going to the cross together. And he says, you must deny yourself. What does it mean to deny yourself? When you deny something, you say no. When you deny somebody, you say no. Peter, you must be one of them. He said, no, I don't know him. That's denial. And when Jesus said, if any man is going to follow me, let him deny himself. That means you deny yourself. Somebody has offended you. Self inside will say, give it back to him. Give it back to him. Don't allow that to go. He wants to make a fool of you. He wants to walk over you. Get it back to him. That insult, get all the insult together and throw it back at him. You say no to sell. The temptation to be angry. The temptation to fight. The temptation to defend yourself. Because they've told a lie against you. Something you never knew anything about. Somebody is, you know, suggesting that that is what you've done. You say, me, all right, I'll deal with you. And don't do that. Deny self. Self will say, this is what to do. You say no to self. Now you are born again, you were drinking before. And self will say, are we going to remain like this only drinking water? Are we going to remain like this only drinking fruit juice? What am I going to have? What I used to have? You say no. You say no to self. That's denying self. If you have been smoking this one, you smoke marijuana, you smoke an ordinary one, you throw external, you smoke whatever it is coming from the weed, coming from the forest. You know, as you're not born, as you're not born again, self will say, ah, what are we doing? All these uh, retreat time, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this thing did not come and smoke did not come out of the mouth. Now we are finished retreat. Uh, how about you? Give it to me. I want to see it again. You say no. You say no to the cell, to the flesh. Because you see, that is denied yourself. And you see the people who are, you know, all around in your families, they might want you to worship family idol and do this and do that. You say no to self. That's what Jesus said. If anybody is going to follow me, if he's going to be my disciple, he will deny self and then he says he will take up his cross. What does that mean? When you say no to self, self will make life a little bit unpleasant. 
a little bit uncomfortable. That's the cross. That's the cross. Because the cross crosses happiness. The cross crosses enjoyment. The cross crosses excitement. You don't feel like jumping and being excited and, you know, going about and laughing. The cross cancels laughter for a moment. And because, and then you pick up that cross. You know, some people, they say, I don't know whether I want to stand for this because this thing is taking my joy, it's taking my laughter, it's taking my gladness, it's taking my happiness. That's the cross right there. And anytime you deny self, you say no to self the consequence will be there will be a part of you that will not like that and then you say this is uncomfortable stay there and be on the cross there and the Lord will see you through in Jesus name give me a good amen there and then it says follow me look at Mark look at Mark chapter 8 look Mark chapter 8 and I'm reading here from verse 34 Mark chapter 8 and we're looking at it from verse 34 and when he had called the people unto himself unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself whosoever will come after me let him deny himself I'm going to ask you a question do you ever say no to yourself I understand saying no to the devil I understand that I understand saying no to your enemy I understand that I, I understand saying no to unbelievers come and do this no I'm a child of God I understand saying no to the unbelievers but yourself yourself you love yourself so much you pet yourself so much you take care of yourself so much and whatever self wants that's me that's me that's me I cannot deny myself you must if you're going to follow the Lord there must be something in your life that you're able to say no to self. Self, keep quiet. You're not going to have that today. Self, keep quiet. It's a new life. It's a new day. That's the old life. You're not going to have that anymore. Self, shut up. Don't disturb me. I'm, I'm doing something important. Self, don't come back with that thought to me again. I said no. And you know, sometimes if you have uh, some pet at home, might be a cat, or might be a dog, and that dog comes around, and you're busy doing so, say, please go, go your way. And then the, God, the dog is still walking the tail. I said go. And the dog is still walking walk the tail, you know, wanting to jump on your lap. I said go. And then what will the God not do? It will go because now you're firm. The same thing with self. Self will say that thing I spoke about, give it to me now. Self will say that place we wanted to go, let's go there now. Self will say that thing I wanted, I wanted to enjoy. Let's, I said no. Ah, I said you said no before. I, but are you all right now? Are you free now? Are you less busy? Can we do it now? I said no. And when you say no like that, self will keep quiet in Jesus' name. Give me a good day, amen, if you're still there. In verse, then it says, and take up his cross and follow me. Verse 35, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, they are for the gospel's sake, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man? If he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. If you keep on petting flesh and petting self. If you keep on going along with self and whatever suggestion, whatever demand, whatever desire. Self is demanding of. You're always giving it. What shall it profit a man? If he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's why we keep on saying no to that self. That self will not overcome us in Jesus. Jesus name Luke chapter 9 verse 23 Luke chapter 9 and we're looking at verse 23 Luke chapter 9 verse 23 it tells us in Luke chapter 9 verse 23 it says and, and he said unto them all not some of them he said unto them all he's saying to the children who are born again he said unto them all he said unto the strength of the youths who are born again he said unto them all he said unto the members of the church who are born again men and women he said unto them all he's saying to the pastors he's saying to the leaders you know, sometimes we need to avoid the danger of the higher we go, the cooler we become. The higher we go, the, uh, the more idle we become. 
the higher we go, the more unconcerned we become. And we think that it's no more for the pastors, it's no more for the overseers. The devil is also running after the overseers and after the leaders. And the devil will want the leader to react this way and react that way. You know, you can talk like that to the young people and talk like that to the members and talk like that to the junior ministers. We've been here for a long time. My brother, my sister, even for those of us who appear to be senior ministers, self-denial is still there. And we still need to we still need to say no to ourselves. That is, I'm not saying that I'll say no to you. You say no to me. I say myself. I say no to myself. An idea will come in my mind. I say, no, shut up. That idea, a thought will come in my, in my mind. I say, shut up. Even though you are a GS or you are overseer or you are a leader, you are a pastor, you still need to say no to yourself. He said unto them all, verse 23, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. What's the next word there? Tell me. Tell me. Daily. You know, becoming a missionary is like sometimes like bearing the cross. You go to a new set of people you've never met. That's like a cross. You're listening to some people you don't even understand their language. That's like a cross. You leave the familiar territory in your own country and then you go to a place where they're all strangers. You don't even know who to talk to. I don't to understand their language. That's a cross. And it says, we bear the cross daily. But you know, when we become so complacent and we become so much at ease and we feel that now this is who I'm, I'm settled down. And because I'm settled down, the call of God is coming. And the call of God is saying, this is what you should do. And self will say, can I hear that again? To be uprooted? Can I hear that again? To be transferred? Can I hear that again? To move out of this place to another place? Doesn't this man know that that is uncomfortable for the flesh? Doesn't he know that, you know, the, the older you become, the more settled the body is and the mind is. And then we're already attached and glued and married onto the familiar. And now we're going to the unfamiliar. That's the cross. That's the cross. And it says you deny yourself and you bear the cross daily. And then you follow me. And the blessing of following the Lord will be upon you in Jesus' name. You see, this cross of Jesus Christ, we don't lay it down. If we lay it down, that will be our ruin. You will not be ruined in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 22. For even hereunto were ye called. Were ye called? I hear some people, I'm called to be an evangelist. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm called to be a mission. Hold on, hold on. I'm called to be a miracle worker. Hold on, hold on. That's a call that many people are not looking at for. Even here unto what he called because Jesus also suffered for us, leaving us an example of suffering that ye should follow his steps. How about that calling? How about that calling? It's only, only a call to jump up and then have a crusade and then command that one to be healed. And then they call to popularity. They call to being an international evangelist. How about this call over here? For here unto what he called. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. He was reviled, he reviled not again. He was abused, he abused not. He was insulted, he insulted not again. Are you in the habit of always throwing it back? You know, the, is, there are some people in our land, they have popularized the statement, send it back to the sender. That's not of Christ. That's not of Christ. And there are people today, if, if you mistakenly offend them, we didn't mean to offend you, but we were not, you know, thinking about how it will affect you. And we mistakenly stepped on your toes. Ah, you did that. I'm going to step on your head. You step on my toe. I will step on your head. You're sending it back to the sender now. That's not right. The Lord has not taught taught us that way. We're not going to follow the way of retaliation. 
or the way of revenge. He's saying over here, he did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. And when he was, when he suffered, he threatened not. When he suffered, he threatened not. You know, some people have forgotten that we are working for God. They have forgotten that this is the business of the Father. And if we mistakenly just, uh, you know, say something we shouldn't have said, even privately, or maybe mistakenly or, or publicly, and then he says, okay, I'm not going to walk in the church again. What do you mean? Has Christ offended you? Has the Father offended you? And the Holy Ghost offended you. And then the souls that should get saved through you have they offended you because of this man that mistakenly said something he shouldn't have said. I'm not going to walk for God again. How could you say that? Why don't we endure for the sake of the people that we need to get into salvation? When he suffered, he threatened not, but he, com he committed himself to him that judges righteously, who in his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes, tell me. I said, by whose stripes, tell me. We're healed, you are healed in Jesus' name. The way of the cross. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There is no other way but this. I shall never get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. I must needs go on in the blood sprinkled way. The way they pass that my Savior trod. If I ever climb to the height sublime, where the soul is at home with God, then I bid farewell to the way of the world, to walk in it nevermore. For my Lord says, come, and I seek my home, where he waits at the open door. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know, as I onward go, the way of the cross leads home. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. The way of the cross that will get us there. You'll get there in Jesus' name. You'll not stop your journey halfway through. People might offend you, forgive, and just go your way. People might mistakenly or even deliberately, foolishly, ignorantly say something about you. You precious child of God and precious a saint of God. And they don't know what they are talking about. Just say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The way of the cross, listen, bear the cross. Bear the cross. Bear the cross. You tell the Lord, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Remember what he said on the cross of Calvary. And remember all those words that he spoke. That's what gave you salvation. That's what gave you redemption. You tell the Lord, you tell the Lord, just like he did. Just like he did. And follow after the example of the Lord. He said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. As this great revival is coming on now, you don't want to have bitterness in your mind. You don't want to have unforgiving spirit in your mind. So and so said, so and so did, so and so acted. Forget all about that. And you can say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They don't know it hurts. They don't know how I feel. They don't know how that really is painful. But Lord, they don't understand. Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive all the people that have offended you. That's the way of the cross. And I plead of the Lord. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Hear him say, Verily I say unto you today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Casting all your cares on him. He cared for his mother even while he was on the cross. And now that is by the throne of the heavenly father, he cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. Don't be discouraged. He cares for you. Remember, he was forsaken because of you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He has taken all your iniquity, all your sin. All your evil, he has laid them on Christ. You will never bear them anymore because Christ has taken everything away from you. He took your sin 
and he gave you his own righteousness. Remember, he said, I thirst. You will not go to hell again because Christ has suffered a thirst for you. You not bear eternal wrath anymore because Christ bore that thirst for you when he said, I thirst. He said, it is finished. Your punishment is gone. Your perdition is gone. That heavy load is gone. And our Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Commend yourself to God. Commit yourself to God. Father, Father, into your hands I commit, I commend my spirit. And fight the world or the cross. Fight the flesh or the cross. Fight the demons or the cross. Fight Satan or the cross. Is a cross, the cross of Jesus Christ, a mighty weapon in the hand of the people of God. And follow the way of the cross. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know, as I onward go, that the way of the cross leads home. And he'll see you through. Victory is just already. He'll see you through. Power is just ready. He'll see you through. The anointing abides already. He will see you through. You'll go from victory to victory through the way of the cross. The way of the cross leads home. In Jesus' name we pray. People of God, I said in Jesus' name we pray. We thank God for the cross of Jesus Christ. I said we thank God for the cross of Jesus Christ. How many are thanking God for the cross of Jesus Christ? That's right, that's right, that's right. Praise the Lord. You know, on the cross over there, he took everything from Satan. He took everything away from you. He already drank that bitter cup. You will not drink the bitter cup again in Jesus' name. You know, as you go back, you are going to see victory you have never seen. The power you have never seen. And the authority you have never seen. And you know, what, what, what used to make you offended, what used to make you angry, you know, all those things are under your feet right now. You see, I, I was even expecting a heavy cross. That is that what they call, this one is not a cross. You say, praise the Lord, you walk over that thing and go your way. You know, I just see, you know, a mighty army coming out of this place and going back into the world. And I see you with all the shoes of iron and all the shoes in your feet. And then as you are walking, you are walking on the devil. You are walking on Satan. You are walking on sickness. And you are walking victoriously. I said you are walking victoriously. And anywhere you go now, every power of darkness will clear before you. In Jesus' name. Go back and feed your enemy. Because all those people that took something away from you, God will multiply everything they took away. You'll be feeding your enemies in Jesus' name. Let me see your anointed hands again. Let me see them, anointed hands. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time because you have brought us to a height of victory and will never come down from this height of victory in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for all our brothers, all our sisters, all our daughters, all our sons, all our children, everywhere. I pray the world will not have authority or power over them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, Satan, evil spirits, and demons will not have authority over you anymore in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, bitterness in the world, unforgiveness in the world will not have any place in the corner of your heart. In Jesus' name, I pray that Jesus will occupy your heart. His name will occupy your heart. His glory will occupy your heart. And then, as you go from here and you are going back home, we are like a mighty army. Everywhere you go, you will prevail in Jesus' name. The mighty weapon of the cross in your life will conquer every enemy. Will conquer every demon. Will conquer every disease. Will conquer every evil spirit in Jesus' name. All those negative situations and circumstances in your life before you came, they are reversed right now. And then as you follow this way of the Lord, the way of the cross that leads home, you will get home eventually. 
you'll get over over here you'll get home without any havoc happening to your life in jesus name and on the final day on the final day when the saints go marching in when the saints go marching in are you one of them when the saints go marching in i said are you one of them when the saints go marching in where you are why don't you march let me see you march now march 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 i said march when the saints go marching in you'll be among them in jesus name and while we're here now in this world, as we go from here to there, as we go from here to the office, as we go from here to the market, as we go from here to the farm, as we go from here to the school, as we go from here anywhere, you're marching to victory. You're marching in authority. And the power of the Lord will not fail your life in Jesus' name. No sickness will overcome you. No evil power will overcome you. And then no, uh, no injury of the world and no offense of the world and no enemy of the world will seize your heart with bitterness in Jesus' name. All the iniquity Jesus has taken away from you will never come back. All the condemnation the Lord has taken from you will never come back. All the punishment the Lord has taken away from you will never come back. Or well, the joy of the Lord, or well, the celebration of the name of the Lord, and with victory in your soul, you'll be marching to victory every day in Jesus' name. I release you now into the power of the Lord. I release you into your victory. I release you on your journey. I release you into joy. I release you unto victory. I release you unto the fulfillment of every good thing in your life in Jesus' name. Surplus, abundance, joy, victory, triumph, authority, anointing, power will follow you in Jesus' name. That anointing on your hand will never dry up. Lay them on the sick and they are going to recover in Jesus' name. Anything you do with this anointed hand will prosper. Go back home now and go and prosper. Lord, confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.